Um, and that's important for in between the presidential elections, we do have local candidates that run and win and do really great things in their community. So here's a really short slide with just a few um, Greens that have done really notable things um, in their communities or or even just um you know between the presidential cycles because unfortunately you know media and all likes to pretend that we only come around for president presidents and that's it uh jason west for example is a former green mayor in new plots new york who was actually the first to officiate same-sex marriages before it was legal that was a green party person that helped start that uh gail mclaughlin was a former green mayor of richmond california um, who made important policing reforms and actually uh, prevented evictions during the 2008 housing crisis. That shows how important these local offices are at handing off crises. Um, instead of begging Congress to do something when we know that they're not, um, Greens can have power in their local governments and, and take these important actions. And I think, like I mentioned before with the pandemic, this is, this is, a, um, this is a very important time to be able to build that local power. Um, again, I think media wants us to focus on national because that's where we have the least power. Um, so what we need to do is build locally, build those connections and, and build our local power through our movements and our candidates. And when people see us, you know, when people see someone like Gail McLaughlin using eminent domain to stop evictions, mm -hmm. right? Taking, taking property from banks to stop them from evicting people during a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. When people see that happen, they learn that there's something possible that they might not have actually thought was possible before. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, when I hear Democrats talk about COVID relief, they have no imagination. Even within historical context, they have no imagination. Like the idea that we should have nationalized production for PPE, you know, it should have been done immediately. And it's what we did in World War II. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just completely out of the out of the conversation. So when we do get elected into these local offices and when we do actually govern progressively, people will, you know, it'll, it'll turn on a light. And I think, you know, as we do get elected to more of these offices and get chances to, to really show what we can do um, through green governance, um, I think people will support then support us even more in those bigger tickets. Right. Because I mean, a Democrat knocks on your door and tells you they're going to do something. That's just what you say to a voter, mm -hmm. right? These are, uh, we've all been lied to by politicians of both parties for our entire lives. Right. Um, so when green, lo when local green uh, elected act like local green electeds our our you know, presidential ticket, our state house tickets, our congressional tickets, they get a little, uh, a little more credibility. Right. Because Greens have actually shown, unlike, you know, even progressive Democrats who always end up towing the line um, when when Greens act local, act progressively locally, it will really bolster those up those uptick campaigns, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So there, there's some other um, points here on, on the slide. Reverend Pinky was community organizer in Michigan uh, against Whirlpool, which was. Um, um, I don't remember all the details there, but there was, uh, you know, corporate control of the local, local community and really mistreated workers and community and all. And so Greens were leading that effort um, against that for, you know, fair working conditions and wages and whatnot. Um, Cherry Honkel, I had mentioned a moment ago, is a huge um, houseless advocacy person. And um, I, she does amazing work in Philadelphia. And she co-founded the Poor People's Human Economic Rights Campaign. Uh, which is still very active today and actually giving trainings to people on how to get involved in that houseless advocacy, how to help houseless people um, find places to live um, and to really advocate for change there. And that's, that's part of why and one reason she was chosen for the vice presidential candidate because of her amazing work in that, in that area. And Democrats in Philadelphia try to keep her off the ballot all the time. Um, you know, so that's something that we're fighting against, but, you know, we are the fighting. The last time she ran for state house, people were charged and prosecuted and yes. <laughs> found guilty of, yeah. I think, four people went to prison over voter fraud for removing stickers for her write-in votes and things like that. Yeah, exactly. They um, they were telling people that they weren't allowed to vote for the Green candidate, um, and they, they were actually prosecuted. Like, this is not just an accusation. This is, it went through the whole legal process. So, um um, but that fight continues, so definitely check out uh, Sherry and um, her organization and how you can help. 
Um, and then, you know, Jill Stein in 2016, after her presidential run, uh, did a really great thing that uh, she challenged um, uh, the votes in a, f in a few of the important states, including my state of Pennsylvania, which most people don't realize that um, Pennsylvania had fully electronic voting system that had zero audit trail. When you voted, it was on a machine, and then uh, you just hope that it was counted properly. There was literally no way to count, like not not just even for me to verify, but like even elections officials, no one could verify it. It was just all the software. Um, and so there was a lot of questions about that. Um, and Jill Stein's lawsuit eventually led to Pennsylvania um, adopting auditable paper ballots for the first time in the 2020 election. So now we have, you know, an audible paper trail that you can trust um, and that you can audit and make sure that all the votes are properly counted in the way that they should be. And, you know, Donald Trump and others were, were suing, saying you can't trust the election results and all. And so who knows, he might've got further if it weren't for a uh, the green candidate pushing for this change because it wasn't the Democrats. There's a Democratic governor of Pennsylvania. He wasn't pushing this. And in fact, he fought that lawsuit for several years before finally settling with Jill Stein. So, you know, I think it's important to point out um, all the great work the Greens do between elections. Um, in their local communities and even state and national, you know, like I'm saying here.